So, Bill, we're sitting here today, we're talking about this flour versus flinty starch, and I'd like to get your opinion on what you know the differences between the flour and the flinty starch are. Um, we have a lot of experience looking at hard textured corn versus more floury corn because we sell a lot of units in Europe. Mm -hmm. And in Europe, uh, most of our competitors are selling flint corn. Uh, but even in Europe, we know that there really isn't a negative effect to that harder starch if it's dry corn as long as we grind it fine enough. And every dairy already grinds their corn fine for those reasons. And on the fermentation side, whether we're talking high moisture corn or, uh, or corn silage, there really isn't that much of that uh, hard denty kind of or hard flinty kind of starch in that kernel at that maturity that's really complexed with the proteins as it gets closer to combining maturity. So really all of our data shows that if you look at seven hour starch digestibilities, there really isn't a big difference between any of the hybrids out here at corn silage or high moisture corn maturity. Okay. So if I understand this correctly, Bill, and I got my little prop here so it helps me explain things here. If this was a corn kernel here, you know, kind of the hard out, outer side of it, and we'll pretend that this right now is dry corn and you can see inside of it I've got some, I actually put some corn starch in there a little kind of representing the corn itself or whatever. So if we were to process this and break this entire piece up here, then we, the cow would be able to utilize what's inside of that. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, this would be similar to the pericarp, and that's why kernel processing is so important in corn silage that we get this broken apart so that we have access to the starch granules. Um, and then in this one, you've got uh, dry corn, dry starch in here, so we want to grind it fine. Mm -hmm. If it was uh, high moisture corn or corn silage, over time, we're going. The acids are going to begin to help degrade that, uh, that uh, solubilize that protein that's surrounding the starch granules, so cows can get at it. So it's kind of a time function with the fermented corn; is it will get more digestible over time. And most nutritionists today know how to account for that. Okay. Yeah, that was my next question too. Was so this is actually a gelatin cap. So if we put this in water, vinegar, it break down. Yep. yep. And that'd be kind of like how it's done in the high moisture corn or in exactly. fermentation. Exactly. Okay. So at the end of time, then regardless if it's uh, a flinty or a floury corn, if our processing is adequate and proper for it, or if we ferment it properly, it won't make a difference at the end of time for starch utilization in the cow. No, and, if, and the other thing that a lot of people talk about is they're just talking about ruminal starch digestibility. Mm -hmm. The seven hour starch digestibility test that most people are referring to is only what happens in the rumen. They're just counting what happens in the intestines. So if you really wanna know uh, if you really have a problem, analyze for fecal starch. And if we've got less than 3% uh, starch in the manure, we know that we've had really good digestion. In fact, one of my fears with the real floury material that they're talking about, which again, I don't think there are big differences, <clears throat> but mm -hmm. those who are claiming it may not truly realize that if we have too much starch digested in the rumen, we are going to cause subclinical acidosis, we're going to have com component problems, and I think we can actually go too far in terms of having starch digested in the rumen. The intestine is a great place, very efficiently uh, starch can be digested there as well. So to me, this sounds like this problem can be easily managed with management in terms of how we process this or how we feed this, and then we balance it for the cow from there. Well, absolutely, and, and furthermore, um, University of Wisconsin, Joe Lauer's corn, corn silage plots, they don't test for starch digestibility. That should not be something that we factor into a hybrid selection. It's what happens at harvest and after harvest, as you say, Matt, the processing and length of time and storage. That's really where a nutritionist has to understand it. But using that as a factor to select a hybrid, uh, I don't think that should be the case. Perfect. Well, I appreciate the information today, Bill. Thanks, Matt.